Hi uh, everyone, uh, my name is Dr. Arbaz Sajjad and uh, this will be the first class or lecture I will be taking for you. The topic for today's lecture is laboratory procedures and insertion protocols in RPD. This is the first part of a series of two lectures. Now moving on without any further ado. The learning outcomes to be expected from this lecture are at the end of this lecture, you should be able to plan the sequence of laboratory steps involved in fabrication of a cast partial denture or a CPD. You should be able to plan the steps involved in the insertion of a CPD. You should be able to explain the appropriate post insertion care to the patient and you should also be able to identify and manage or treat the post denture insertion problems. Now coming to the laboratory steps, that is the first, uh, first part of this uh, presentation. It involves first the serving of the diagnostic cast followed by serving or tri of the master cast. The first step in this is the tripoding of the master cast, then the design that you have selected for the particular Kennedy's situation is then transferred onto the master cast without any error. This is followed by uh, the block out of the cast followed by relief of the master cast. After this, the master cast is duplicated and a refractory cast is obtained. On the refractory cast, you do the wax up and sprowing of the cast partial design. This is followed by investing of the refractory cast, followed by casting and divestment. The, after divestment, the finished casting is retrieved. It is finished. And this brings us to the end of the laboratory steps. Moving Now, as I mentioned, the first step in RPD designing or a designing for a CPD is the surveying. In surveying, uh, the undercuts are first measured to decide which type of class tip or class assembly you are going to give. Usually for a cast partial design, undercuts of 0.25 mm are sufficient to provide cast assemblies. The surveying, uh, the maximum height of contour of the tooth is marked. This is followed by designing of the path of insertion of the clasp, where the clasp is going to engage the undercut and how it is going to cross over the maximum convexity of the tooth and engage the undercut on the abutment teeth. So after the before we go any further, the master cast is duplicated in order to ensure that if there is any damage, the work is not lost. So uh, after serving of the diagnostic cast and the serving of the master cast, the caster cast is duplicated using a, uh, either a hydrochloride impression material like uh, agar agar or using a room temperature vulcanizing silicone also known as RTV silicones. This is then poured in an investment material of choice, usually a type 4 or type 5 investment material. Application, the master cut is again re-tripoded on the surveyor to uh, re-ensure the path of insertion that was previously determined or chosen on the diagnostic cast by the clinician. Then the design is then transferred and the technician should ensure that whatever designing or waxing of the framework is done on this uh, master cast uh, should follow the path of insertion that was chosen initially. Uh, design as I said is drawn on the diagnostic cast and then it is transferred on the master cast. So uh, when design transfer is done on the master cast we need to ensure that the clasp assembly especially the retentive clasp arm is transferred in the same way as it was intended on the design because this would ultimately ensure the retention of the RPD framework. The RPD designing can be done analog by designing it on the model using different color pencils. And nowadays we have uh, ExoCAD and other 3D uh, designing softwares using which the a soft copy or a soft scan of the design can be produced on a digital cast, which is then sent as an STL file to the laboratory, which can then mill it using uh, titanium milling machines or it can be created using 3D printing or the DMLS which is also known as direct metal laser centering. Uh, 
after this that is before the fabrication or of the refractory cast the master cast is then prepared for duplication so first the block out is done of the master cast there are usually three parts of block outs that is a parallel block out a tapered block out or a shaped block out and an arbitrary block out coming first to the block out in parallel block out usually the undercuts that is uh, on the teeth and the gingival crevices that is below the uh, height of convexity of the tooth are blocked out with a uh, carving wax or the inlay wax over here so using the carving wax or inlay wax the undercuts beneath the height of maximum convexity of the tooth are blocked out that is usually undercuts on the for the proximal plates for the retentive arm below the reciprocal arm they are then blocked out as you can see over here This is also done using the surveyor maintaining the master cast on the surveyor and the determined path of insertion using the tripoding marks that are given over here. After the parallel shape blockout or a tapered blockout is done, as you can see here, you see this wax attached in this circular fashion on the tooth. This is for RPI, that is a rest proximal plate, and an eye bar is going to come on this tooth. So below the design of the eye bar all the tissue and the vestibular areas and the undercuts are blocked out in such a way so that when the refractory cast is, cast is obtained the technician just adapts the wax pattern following the curve which is visible on the model so this is basically the shape block out you will do the same shape block out for the reciprocal arm for the indirect retainer and so on Type of blockout is called as an arbitrary blockout. This type of blockout is done in areas which are not involved in the RPD framework. This is for the ease of removal of the master cast after duplication. That is, there should not be any distortion. Usually, undercuts uh, below the uh, teeth and the undercuts in the vestibules are blocked out so that after duplication, the cast can be easily pulled out of the mold without causing any distortion you can see here usually the area of the tooth uh, beneath the incisal third and the vestibule and the heart tissue undercuts are usually blocked out and any undercuts in the distal portion of the lingual side usually a retromalahad area are blocked out since they are tapered and create a concave profile this is followed by relief Relief is usually provided where your denture base that is the acrylic gets attached to the CPD framework. So you have to provide a space beforehand that is before the waxing and then casting of the frameworks where the acrylic will flow and then it will attach to the framework. The framework is not visible in these areas so first a 22 or 20 gauge sheet of wax is then adapted onto the denture base area that will be relined with acrylic this is followed by duplication as i said the whole purpose of duplication is to create a refractory cast on which the final waxing of the cpd will be done you cannot do a cpd wax up of the framework on the regular master cast because it is made up of a uh, gypsum type 4 or type 5 uh, uh, material so it will completely burn out during the burn out or casting procedure so you need a refractory material that can withstand the high temperatures of burnout and casting so duplication as i said is usually done with a hydroclide impression material like agar agar <coughs> So Last this is a small video uh, that has been uh, prepared to show you guys the how cast is secured to the base of the flask using sticky wax. Uh, duplication is done. The top part so of you the see, flask is then assembled. The master cast is first attached to the wax. base of the mold sure using is sticky wax. The then the, the mold vertical walls are then agar, agar placed over it. Duplicate the master cast.
it is a reversible hydrocolloid material. At room temperature, it is a thing that After this, the agar-agar hydrochloride is melted as the gel state. And once it is melted, it is used to duplicate the... To melt the agar material into a solid, which is then used in the duplication process. So, this is a Bigo uh, Jellovit, which is a machine which is used to melt and temper the hydrochloride impression material. So once the agar agar is melted, our mold is ready with the uh, with the blocked out master cast, which is then poured with melted or molten agar agar to the till the top of the mold is filled. From the mold, a phosphate and once it is filled, is mixed in with it is then containing liquid. Allowed to set this that is agar is allowed to cool till it reaches the room temperature, and after that the mold is. Uh, disassembled and the, the time required for complete set of refractory material and it is, is then uh, the duplicated as I said with a refractory investment material period, usually a gypsum bonded or phosphate bonded investment material and then is used in a drying oven uh, most commonly a phosphate bonded investment material is used minutes. to prepare the refractory cast the refractory so this cast here we can see a refractory cast is being produced after the refractory cast is set it is dried in an oven because it contains a lot of moisture moisture which is absorbed from the agar mold so here the refractory cast is being dipped in beeswax because refractory cast are highly rough and porous owing to the particle size of the refractory mixture material so in order to get a smooth surface this last step is being carried once the refractory cast is obtained The waxing and sprueing can begin. That is, the design which we had drawn on the master cast, the same design is then waxed up using prefabricated wax patterns and the uh, uh, different gauges of uh, casting waxes onto the refractory cast. So, this is uh, you can see first a uh, thin uh, relief or a uh, layer of uh, inlay wax or the carving wax is spread over the major connector design. This is followed by the placement of the mesh or the lattice pattern on the area where the relief was provided for the minor connector which will hold the acrylic and the denture teeth. Then another layer of a 20 gauge or a 22 gauge uh, casting wax is then adapted onto the major connector which has a uh, textured or we can use a smooth pattern uh, uh, casting wax also and then using inlay wax all the minor connectors the rest the indirect retainers they are all fabricated the cast is ready for sprueing and investing now this is done in two pass, uh, parts first being a 3 to 4 mm layer and in so this I again uh, investing is similar to how we duplicate a refractory cast we invest the refractory cast in an investment material which has the same uh, thermal uh, and uh, hydro expansion as the refractory cast this you can see here the sprueing is done once the wax pattern is fabricated a large reservoir or is attached to the wax sprues which are attached to the framework this is then uh, you know invested in the investment material of choice after investing the wax elimination is carried out because the entire uh, wax sprues the cpdd framework and the reservoir wire are all made up of wax so first a burnout is done by placing the investment rings inside a burnout furnace and once the burnout is done that is wax is eliminated from the mold casting of the CPD framework of removable partial denture now uh, off late for the choice. past decade invest induction casting removable is the casting method of choice for uh, the all the casting works in uh, prosthetics or dentistry Celsius range. so in induction casting induction casting is based on the electric currents in the metal core induced from a magnetic field 
A heating coil so this, of copper uh, tubing is a video which explains the induction casting of a CPD and framework. And to an alternating current source. The alternating current in the coil sets up eddy currents of electrons in the crucible and the alloy. The movement of these currents in induction the casting, the you can, coil, here you see some electric coils which are enclosed in a copper tubing cycle, is internally and these coils, when the current is applied to these coils, uh, uh, eddy current is generated the in these coils the which creates, is, creates a magnetic process. field which melts the sensor metal alloy the pellets. Mechanism so this is the crucible in which the metal alloy pellets are placed the placement of and the once the metal alloy pellets are melted, the casting is carried on. Activation of this the alternating is a current window source starts the heating which process. Which is used to visibly the observe heating, whether the, the casting metal pellets are melted. Once they are melted, the induction machine the is uh, turned on and the casting begins. Once the metal has reached the casting temperature and the heated so, uh, casting ring is from the burnout furnace, the mold is the placed is released in the induction the casting machine. Once the, the when the casting process uh, is completed, metal pellets have melted. The mold is removed from the casting machine and allowed to cool down according to the manufacturer's instructions. So basically, a centrifugal force is created, and the metal pellets which are melted are forced into the mold by centrifugal force. So this is the mold which has been filled with the molten alloy. Now it is allowed to bench cool for a couple of hours depending upon the manufacturer's instruction for the uh, alloy material. The CPD framework are usually cast in chrome cobalt alloys because of their strength and rigidity. So once the framework is uh, cooled down, it is divested, it is retrieved, uh, the sprues are cut and then the framework is finished. So this is a retrieved framework after divesting. You can see the sprues are still attached to it and this is the reservoir which is attached to the sprues which is in turn attached to the casted framework. So this brings us to the end of the part one of this uh, lecture. At the appropriate time, the outer layer of the refractory material is removed by tapping it with a mallet. The resulting investment is then removed by airborne particle abrasion in a self-contained machine manufactured for this purpose. Subsequently, the casting is examined for defects. If the casting is deemed satisfactory, finishing and fitting procedures are begun. So these are the recommended reading list for uh, this lecture on laboratory steps for CPD and the insertion protocol and uh, thank you all for a patient here.